Picture the scene. It's the night before your assignment's due. You've just remembered that you need to do your bibliography and references. You've also just remembered that all of the details of the books and articles that you've quoted from are written down in different notebooks, and you can't actually read your handwriting anymore. Panic starts to set in. <coughs> We've all been there. There's nothing worse than realising you have no idea where you got that amazing quote from, or that your scribbled down reference means absolutely nothing to you months after you first wrote it. Or you might be really good at documenting what you read, and you've got lots and lots of saved PDFs on your laptop, but you've never backed up your data, and you get a virus, which means you lose everything. Or like a Cambridge student not too long ago, you have your flat broken into and you get your laptop stolen, along with several piles of printed out papers and notes, meaning a year of PhD work has effectively been lost. But now I've thoroughly terrified you and made you just that little bit paranoid about your current system, I will present a solution, Zotero. Zotero is one of many bibliographic management tools out there. You might have heard of other products such as Mendeley or EndNote, but I quite like Zotero and I'm going to explain why. Zotero acts primarily as a browser extension, so you download it and it sits in whatever browser you use. It works brilliantly with Firefox and if you use Chrome or Safari you can download the standalone version too. Once installed into your browser, you get a little Z appearing in the top right hand of your browser window. By clicking on this, your Zotero library will pop up at the bottom of your screen. You can keep this closed when you're browsing the web, but it's good to know that it's hiding down there, accessible with a click of a button. Why is your library so important? Well, as you travel around the web, your Z symbol will be joined by an additional symbol that will change, depending on what kind of resource you're looking at. If you're on a news website, the symbol will appear as a rolled up newspaper, or if you're looking at an electronic journal article, the symbol will change to a sheet of paper. By clicking on this ever-changing symbol, you save that resource to your library. Depending on what it is, you might get a snapshot of a web page that you're viewing, or if you're looking at an electronic journal article, you'll often be able to save a PDF of the article to your library. The joy of Zotero is that as well as saving a version of the resource you're looking at, it'll also save as much information about the resource as possible, such as authors, publication dates and titles. How good this information is depends on what metadata is available, so some web pages can be a bit vague, but many articles and ebooks have all of the information you really need to get a full citation. If anything doesn't quite pull through in the way you expect it to, or if you want to add some notes or tags, all the citation fields are editable. You can also manually add new entries to things you find offline, like book chapters, or even upload scans, PDFs, and other file types like audio and video to your library so you can keep everything together. Zotero gives a generous 300 megabytes of storage for free. Considering that your average electronic journal article without too many pictures is only a few hundred kilobytes, that gives you a good amount of storage for a project. For more storage, you can get a storage plan with Zotero for a fairly reasonable price, depending on how much space you want. As Zotero is entirely cloud-based, you can use it on multiple devices and also just log into your library via the Zotero website, in case you're not able to use the extension because you're on a public computer, for example. Just remember to sync your library regularly and you're all sorted. You can create folders and collections within your Zotero library to keep everything in order, and if you download the Word plugin, you can also use Zotero to help you reference and then magically create a wonderful bibliography at the end of your work, all in the correct citation style of your choice. As a disclaimer, do always proofread what Zotero has generated for you, but it gets it right most of the time. So use Zotero to save stuff as you read it, or for later reading. It's great for creating bibliographies and keeps everything in one place so you don't have to try and decipher your notes, and will also help you make sure you include everything you read, even that really obscure chapter that you found that one time. So have fun citing with Zotero, and until next time, bye!